Thank you for tuning in to the slow flow class where we continue to kind of work up and open the back of the legs a little bit today. So if you have yoga tune-up balls, have those. If you don't have them, grab a tennis ball or maybe a little squeaky dog ball that has a little give, dryer ball would work too. Um, and then have a yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, anything that's long and you kind of don't mind stretching a little that's around your house will We'll cover it. Long sleeve cotton t-shirt is one of my favorites. All right, we'll get started on our mat with our tuna balls. Here we go. All right, so last class we worked the feet a little bit and we worked the back of the ankle and now we're going to work the leg and we're going to use the tuna balls. If you have one ball, that's fine. You'll just use one ball. If you have both, you'll keep them in the netting. And we're going to almost sandwich the ball in between our upper back leg and our lower back leg and uh, see if we can break up some of that scar tissue. So as I come through the table, I've got a little kneeling pad here. So that's softer. I'm going to take the balls and put it right behind my left knee. If you use one ball, it's a little bit easier to kind of jam it into the back of your knee a little bit too much. So you might not try to press too hard if you only have the one ball. And then once you have it back there, you just play with sitting the hips back gently. Once you get to a spot where you can feel some sensation, but not too much that the muscles are tensing away, you just kind of breathe into it a little bit. You could take a couple rocks side to side if that feels okay. Not giant rocks side to side. And then you can come out of it and pulse back into it a little bit. And this is quite a bit of sensation for me. So I have my hands down on the ground, but if you're looking for more sensation, you might lift your torso up, right? So that you have that whole weight. But notice that if you start to clench up on your muscles, almost in this like spine lengthening way where your crown of your head is getting taller to the ceiling, that maybe it's too much. And then what we'll do is we'll reach back and we'll lower the balls to just a slightly lower spot on the calf and we'll do the same thing. Sit back to your degree. You can take breath and be still. You can take breath and do a little rocking and you can pulse in and out a few times. As we roll the balls down, you may not be able to lift your seat so much without the balls escaping, but that's okay. You can keep your hand back there. And then just keep rolling the balls down. Once you do a new spot, go to the next lower location on the calf. And we'll keep working all the way down until we get to the back of the ankle. And you can always modulate, right? Don't, don't do it if it doesn't feel good is a great, a great uh, mantra to keep you healthy with this ruling. And then when you're ready and there's no rush, finish up where you are, we'll do the back of the right leg and we'll start right up toward the knee as we did on the first side. When the body heals scar tissue in almost kind of like an emergency haphazard way. It will lay down connective tissue really in a strong pattern, but not necessarily grid-like. And while it does the body service in the, in the interim at fixing whatever the injury or the stress was, it's not necessarily the best for movement muscle contraction, flow of energy, 
And so when you can do it in this gentle way, you kind of call the cells to come repair and it's not haphazard. They lay things down more in a grid-like pattern, which is better for muscle contraction and lengthening and also communication and the flow of fluid. I'm almost down to the back of my ankle on that second side. Okay. And that's a great one to do for, uh, for just knee health, right? And these tuna balls, maybe keep them in the living room, <laughs> right? Little, little things that you can do when you're watching TV or something. All right, we're gonna go into our bath. And as you go into your back, have a strap and have a block within reaching. <clears throat> and we're going to start with Apanasana pose too. And um, you don't have to necessarily use the strap in this way, but I think I'm going to show you, right? Yeah, let me show you that. Okay. So I love Apanasana pose. It's when we're lying down and we bring one knee toward our chest and we kind of give it a hug and work on that flexion of the hip crease. And know it's always okay to bring your knee a little bit out to the side, especially if you feel it compressing your ribs too much. But one of the things that I don't love about the pose <clears throat> is that we have to kind of work our arms and our shoulders and it can stress out our neck some. So if you ever want to stay in this pose, which I recommend, like you know, maybe before bed or something more in the yin style, you could use the strap. <clears throat> I just put it around me and the buckle's done. And then as I come into Apanasana, bringing my right knee in towards my chest, I can tighten the strap around the knee and that holds it there. And then I can just let my arms rest down, my shoulder blades can be towards the ground. And that's what you want to work too, right? It's good to work the hip flexion without the flexion of the spine. So that's just a softer way. But if you don't have the strap, that's okay. You could just interlace your hands around the right shin. And then sometimes it's best to keep the left leg bent so that the foot can be to the mat and that helps relax the sacrum, right? It's always better to have the other parts of the body in more of a neutrality when you're stretching you'll get a better kind of alignment overall work into the body. But if it feels okay, you could lengthen the left leg as long as you didn't feel that that pulled you into a back bend in your lower back at all. All right, so we're getting all that compression at the front of the hip, but it's also stretching out Right, the back of the hips too, the lower back some. And then I'll switch, right? I can release my knee. Both legs can come to the ground. I'll take my buckle and pull it away from the tail to kind of open it up. And then I'll take that to the other side. So you can either interlace around your left shin or use the strap. And there's no necessarily right or wrong. It's wherever you feel like it's, it's stable and it's doing the work for you. Decide if that right leg will stay bent or go long. We'll be doing this one on the uh, Wednesday for yin for a little bit longer, but this is a nice warm up too for some of our work today. And 
And this is my, my strong side, my dominant side. So I notice it's a little bit harder to keep my spine in position here. I feel myself back bending a little bit. So I have to just mind over matter, make sure that I'm softening my shoulders, softening my ribs, keeping the back of my neck long. And then release. All right, if you've got the strap looped like me, you can unloop it so that you can take it off, maybe undo the buckle, slide it out. And then we'll use the strap around the ball of the right foot and extend the right foot up towards the ceiling. A little bit different now, right? Now we're opening up the back of that leg. We just did that work to massage with the tune-up balls. We did Apanasana, which gave a little compression to the back of the leg. And now we're reaching through and stretching the back line. And if you can flex the foot and really reach through the heel, as well as pulling the right hip back down into the mat, that will help lengthen the line a little bit more. And same thing with that opposite leg, you could decide to keep it bent or straight. Now we're gonna bend the right knee, bend the left knee, and the foot will come down. The right foot is gonna cross over to the left thigh, coming into figure four. And then I'll lift my left foot off the ground. You could either pull with your hands or interlace your strap around your left thigh, the back of your left thigh. And then that will help hold it in towards the body. Can you feel how this is giving a little bit of a stretch to that, the upper part of the right leg? Probably the ever hip too. Now imagine, I had a teacher say this to me yesterday, imagine your spine is like a fiddlehead and it's rolling out and down towards the ground, especially the, the part where you're reaching your tail at the bottom of your spine. So keep that part heavy to the ground. And then we'll release and switch sides. So strap the left foot, extend it up. The heel is reaching, the back of the hip is pulling down. And the right leg could go long. All right, relax the spine. Feel every part of the spine softening down to the mat. Not to say we want to flatten out our natural curve, just stop it from kind of pulling up or accentuating any more than it is naturally. Okay, we'll come into the figure four. So both knees bend, the right foot comes down and the left foot will come over to the right thigh. If I'm taking this right foot off to deepen sensation, I could take the strap around the back of the right thigh. All right, we'll release. And then let's roll over onto our abdomen. And we'll start in baby crocodile. So you can rest the forehead down, rest the tops of the feet down, and do a little body scan. See if you can release any part of the muscles that are still trying to work. A little reset. Take some lower belly breath. Okay, setting up for cobra, 
We'll take the fingers wide, pressing into the mat, about in line with our sternum, right? And then that calm and confident mantra. Remember, we're gonna try to engage without the strain. As we lengthen the neck, the shoulders come together and down the back, my palms press and gently pull back as I lift my heart. Really feel that pressing and pulling back with the palms. And on an exhale, lower down. Let's try that two more times. Stay up for a few breaths. Really feel into the pose. Find that balance of effort and ease. And then let the hands sweep back. We'll transition up to our table and into our child's pose. Reach the arms forward, start to work in some engagement of the hands and the arms as you press down. And as you press down with the palms, imagine your tailbone is reaching towards the back of your mat and feel how that lengthens your spine from the tip all the way to the fingers. More than the spine there, right? All right, and then we'll come up to table and we're gonna work with balance and calf. So extend the right leg back, reaching through the heel. Now we're nice and strong and open in the back of the leg. The left arm will reach forward. Now again, we're inverted, but we still want that neutral spine. Now the tendency is to drop down to the ground. Can you keep the ribs and the abdomen pulling in? Gazing to the top of the mat, but easy on the back of the neck. Mantra for balancing cat, I can accomplish anything I put my mind to. On your next exhale, tap the elbow and knee together at your center. Inhale, lengthen that back line. Exhale, tap. Inhale, lengthen. And tap. And lengthen. Come back to your table and we'll do that to the other side. Left leg extends, flexing the foot, reaching through the heel. Right arm forward, managing that gravitational pull of the spine down by creating some front body engagement. Lengthen as you breathe in, up and round as you breathe out. Do that three times. After your third tap, extend, and then come back to your table. All right, from here, we'll set up to a down dog. Take the toes, tuck them, send the hips up and back. The same kind of strong palm, strong hand and arm that we worked in our child's pose. The same freeing of the neck and shoulders moving down the body we worked in our cobra. When we flex in the hips like the body like this, it's a complete opening for the back line. Feel the stretch. Resist gravity with the front body. Maybe walk it out, take a little movement bending the knees. Now as you inhale, wave forward to plank. Strong back body keeps us up. Exhale, lead with the heart as you lower. Tops of toes press, palms press and pull as you lift. And lower. Move through your table and back to your dog pose. As you inhale, look forward. Soften, make your way to the top of your mat. Lead with that core into your halfway lift. Forward fold bow. Rise to stand, reach. 
and find your mountain pose. All right, let's work into some sun salutations and just feel into the back line of the body, the folding poses when we're opening, the upright poses, our neutral poses where we have that really strong back. And just notice how things feel after that kind of opening and lengthening work. You could have two blocks for the hands if you'd like. I think I'm gonna skip it today, right? And as we lower to the cobra, now if you have the blocks, you don't necessarily have to lower all the way to the ground, right? All right, here we go. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold deep. Inhale, halfway lift. Strong back as we move into our flank. Shoulders down the neck, away from the ears, core pulling in. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. Feel all the muscles along the sides of your spine. And then move back to dog pose. We'll take five breaths here. All right, softening the knees a little bit so that the spine can lengthen. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step forward. Halfway lift. Forward bow, let all the breath out. Bow your head. Rise to stand. Feel the strength of the legs help open the front body as you reach up, look up, and find your mountain pose. Again, reach up and fold. Up and lift and plank. Strengthen, breathe in. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. Make your way to dog. Five breaths. Make your way to the top of the mat on an exhale. Halfway lift as you inhale. Forward bow, maybe the hands reach for the legs with a gentle pull. Rise to stand. Mountain. One more time, right into it. Reach up. Fold and breathe out. Halfway lift, breathe in. Long exhale as you step to plank. Lengthen and breathe in. Exhale, lower slowly. Take your back bend. Move to dog. Five breaths. All right, come down to your knees and we'll take a hero's pose. So if the knees are sensitive, you can sit on the block between the legs. So hero's pose, that's ver verasana, right? A lot of compression at the back of the thighs. Notice how things feel. Hopefully, or I would assume, even if you do have some knee discomfort, that maybe it's less given the work that we've been doing with the feet and the thighs, who knows, but bring your seat up a little bit higher if you need to, all right? We don't want knee pain here at all. So if you're sitting on one block or no block, can you lean back on tented fingers, okay? If you are on two blocks and you're a little higher, you might need some props for your hands to come into. You could use your bolster or maybe a couple more blocks. And this is gonna be a nice modified camel. So we're trying to kind of back bend as we open up the front body, we've got a lot of strength and compression in the back that we'll use, the back of the legs and also the spine. So we'll feel into some different variations 
as you tend the fingers behind you, this is what we call modified camel. You can lift the heart, lift the gaze, open up the throat. Slowly tuck your chin, come back to your hero's pose. Now we'll do it again. I want you to make sure that you're really using the strength of your legs. Feel the tops of the feet pushing down. Feel your glutes helping to open the front of your hips, right? The strong muscles along your back and your arms, opening up your front body as we do this. But it doesn't also have to be drastic. So you can feel all of that slightly too. So let's try it. We'll come to lean back. Feel that strength in the legs. Feel the shins press down. Your glutes are engaging, opening up the front of your hips. You might feel the weight lifting off your block, and you can go with that. Lift your hips. Right now, we're reaching our pelvis forward. Strong, strong legs, and the head can go back one more time. It's okay to shrug the shoulders and create a little pillow for the head to rest as you lean back. And when you're ready, lower on the exhale, come forward. It can be nice after camel to do a down dog. So maybe before the third one, reset. Right, that funny thing that I say in the yin and supta virasana, I don't always do down dog, but if I do, it's after saddle, right? Those virasana poses, it can feel really nice to open the back line after we uh, do that compression. Okay, so your choice. You can stay with the versions that we were working, or you can find this upright version. And I'm going to use blocks, right? So we're in this kneeling stand. My knees and my feet are about hip width distance, right? So my shins are par parallel to the outer edge of the mat. And then I'm going to start with the blocks on the highest height. You might go lower, right? So first thing I'm going to do, press my shins down. Feel how that protects your knees a little bit. Feel the glutes and the quadriceps kind of opening and strengthening. The core is pulling into the body to support. And as I lean my belly button forward slightly, I can lift my heart, look back. Maybe the blocks come down behind you and they could be outside your feet. They could be inside your feet, depending on how wide. And then again, keep the strong lower body and core as you lift the chest, lift the gaze and let the head drop back to any degree. When you're ready, you can come on up. Try not to twist when you come up. And come back to tabletop, maybe do a dog or maybe a cat-cow pose. All right, from here, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna work some balance that works into those same energetic channels, right? So actually the first thing I wanna do is a tree pose, right? Tree pose first. And opening at the hips really requires a lot of strong back, strong lower body to keep us where we are. So standing into both feet, shift the weight over to the right, the left knee will lift, right? We've got that hip flexion. Right, and the knees at about hip width, we'll take it out to the side, and then I'll place my left foot either to the inner thigh or to the inner calf. Hands can come to heart, or even better, maybe rested on something for balance. And this is what I want you to do. Lift your right toe, or lift your left toes, let them spread so it's not gripping. Soften the knee a little, engage the glute and the quadricep. Feel all corners of your feet. Feel the heel, the ball of the foot on either side. Right, and feel how your strong legs keep your torso lifted and back. So we have that nice alignment with our strong body of head, shoulders, hips, and feet.
and release. We'll try that to the other side. Our left leg bends, got that stable weight in the right foot. The left knee comes out. I'll place the foot to the inside of the right leg, hands to heart or maybe to balance, right? Soften the feet, feel the toes spread, connect with all parts of the bottom of the foot and the ground. Feel your strong leg muscles work, right? We don't have to rely on that knee joint locking back to keep us in place. Glutes are opening up the front of the hips. We keep them back over the heel. Right, our spine muscles, our rector spinae are keeping the chest nice and wide. And release, walk it out. Okay, one more pose. We're gonna take Padabhustasana. So you could have your strap handy. I'm not sure if I'll use it, we'll see. And you, you may not use it. You may not even get to the part that you use it. So handy, but maybe not, right? We'll start working into the right leg first as the lifted leg, shift my weight to the left. Now what I wanna do is interlace my hands around my shin, keep my hips back over my heel. As I work on that hip flexion, see if you can get a nice 45 degree angle. So the knee higher than the hip. As you pull it in, can you round, flex a little bit, feel your core pulling in as you pull your thigh towards your chest, right? Towards your abdomen. Feel that core stability, feel your outer hips hugging in. If you can reach lower, maybe you can. Can you interlace your foot? Right, with your hands. Right, you could also try a strap here. Nice and tall and strong in that standing leg. And then slowly release, don't let it slingshot down. Right, sometimes there can be an intense uh, sensation in that hip crease, that hip flexor when you open. So releasing slow is a good thing. And then we'll try that to the other side. We'll work the left leg, shift the weight into the right. Start by interlacing. All right, work onto that stability first. Feel into your right foot, the strength of your legs and your glutes, hugging that left shin in, keeping the hips back. Feel that core pull in. Right, a little flexion of the spine. Maybe you reach down for the foot. Slowly release. Down, walk it out a little bit. All right, so you found balance. Don't use that strap. We'll come to some seated postures. So try whatever you want to sit on. Give a nice lift to the seat. And butterfly, Ooh, that feels different. That feels nice after coming out of that Pada Bhusasana pose. Right, you can support with blocks if you need to. Sitting up nice and tall, reach the belly button for the heels. Slowly come up, extend the right leg out. The torso is angled towards that right leg. As I bow over it, I'll flex the hips, round the spine, the left arm might reach over. Use your core here. Stretching out the muscles on the left side of the spine.
And come on up and switch sides. Left leg out, right leg in. Torso's angle to the foot as we flex and bow. Right, come on up, and then we'll set up for a lower body twist. Have your strap handy, and we're gonna we're gonna work into cattail a little bit different. And I think that this way might make it easier to get the intention of the pose. So why don't you go ahead? I'll mirror you, and uh, lie on your left side. Right, and you can bend the knees. And the knees are bent. See if you can, while the knees are bent, extend the knees down towards the, the bottom of your mat. So you're opening up the front of the hips just a little bit. And I've got my left arm bent. I'm kind of propping myself up on my upper arm and catching my head in my hand here. Okay. So in this cat tail variation, we might lean back a little bit, right? So you could put a prop back there, a block, a ball, a bolster. So I'll start by taking the strap in my right hand and I'm gonna lace my right foot, right? Foot or ankle. And then you can make sure that you have enough slack on both sides where you can kind of fold it away. And then once you get the strap organized, again, that foot might be pressing or the knee might be reaching towards the bottom. So you've got the foot, the bottom foot, could, could come along, right? You could keep that bent. And then I can reach my left arm out into that T-shape as I roll onto my back slightly. And I've got my foot. Hopefully with all that knee flexion work we did today, this seems a little bit easier. All right, roll onto your left side, release the foot, and we're gonna do that one more time with the opposite leg, all right? So that was more like a half saddle. So this time I'll let the, the right knee bend and come forward with the foot to kind of support myself. And then my bottom leg, my left leg will bend, and I'm gonna start that foot now. And you can hold the strap you know, as far away from your foot or as close to as you need to, whatever you need for distance. Now, as the left knee bends, right, my left foot is coming closer to my seat. And then I've got my right leg coming out and I can lean into that twist one more time, letting the right shoulder dip back, gaze up towards the sky, right? So another version of cattail is where you extend this left leg. So right now it's bent. So I could reach for that outer right thigh and extend through the right foot. My leg might not straighten completely, but it's straightening some here. Cat tail. And then soften. And we'll take that to the other side. So I'm gonna roll onto my right side now. We'll do both knees bent, reaching down towards the bottom of the mat or top of mat in my case. And I'll do that half saddle variation first where I work the top left leg. I'll strap the foot. I might extend the bottom leg straight. The right arm can reach out to that T-shape as I roll onto my back. It's quite a big opening for the top of the foot and the quadricep too. Right, the, the back of the leg and the front of the leg is kind of like Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, they gotta work together. 
All right, we'll soften, release, come back onto our right side and we'll try the other side, the bottom leg, the right leg will bend. My hand will strap that bottom foot. The left knee will bend out, right? Forward of me, maybe the foot comes out too. My lower body is in the twist and then I can lean back, taking the upper part of the spine and the shoulders into the twist too. You could reach, right, your outer left leg with your hand. If you want to try extending and straightening through that left leg. All right, release and soften and roll onto your back. We'll come into this half court shape. You can rest the hands alongside you or on the body. And one more time, just make awareness, make that connection with the bottom of your feet and the ground. The back of your hips. And the back of your shoulders. And the back of your head. You can stay like this or transition into full course pose, Shavasana. And we'll take 20 mindful breaths here, just slowing the thoughts. Start to bring a little bit of movement into your wrists and your ankles, doing circles in both directions. Give the knees a little hug, opening and massaging the back of the hips and the spine. Take some rock side to side. And then curl up like a little ball, tuck your chin to your chest, and roll along the length of your spine. Much needed massage after all that spine strengthening and back strengthening work we did. And come on up to a seat. Sit in any way you like, sit nice and tall, right? Okay. So that mantra for balancing cat that kind of stuck with me today. I can accomplish anything I put my mind to, right? Sure. And as we set those New Year's intentions, I was just thinking, you know, of course there's gonna be changes of plans. Of course, there's going to be failures, mistakes, right? Pivots. And that's all just to be expected, right? The unfortunate part is we just don't know when and where that might happen. So I thought of a great little co closing meditation. If you'll just close your eyes with me. And this mantra of divine love flows in. As we breathe in, divine love flows out as we breathe out. Divine love flows in, divine love flows out, right? Regardless if we do it or not, regardless of what goal we set, regardless if we're successful, we still have this divine love within us that comes to us, that leaves us, and none of the successes or failures can ever touch that. Ready, you can open your eyes. We'll bring hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra, with gratitude for all that we have. And together we breathe in. Exhale out. 
Namaste. Thank you very much for joining me. Happy New Year and good luck, right? Whatever it is we're, we're taking on. Thank you for joining me.